Good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon, my audience. And today, I would like to present my student industrial training. And first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kyomin Tech, and I am doing electrical and electronic engineering at the University Technology Petronas. I just finished my third year of undergraduate study and as a university requirement, I am doing now. I am now doing the student industrial training in the Petronas Charlie Valley Mima operation. And this will be my all end of the presentation. First of all, I would like to point out the, what is the objective of student industrial training. And I would like to brief about the Petronas Charlie Valley Mima operation. And I will mention the organization of Petronas Charlie Valley Mima and Telecom department, which is my department. And I will share my knowledge and experience gained from the student industrial training and followed by the recommendation, conclusion and question and answer session. So student industrial training. It is to integrate the theory with practice and it is to introduce the student to work culture and studying how is the work culture of the organization and industrial practice and to the world scale in the safety practice which is very important and what take communication and personal relations and it is for it is to familiarize UTP student with respective field. This one is from you or from UTP? From UTP. Okay. And now I will like to brief about the post company which is Patronas Chaligali Myama operation. The main office is in the main office is Patronas, which is located in KLCC and it gives the direct management in the Patronas Chaligali Myama operation. And that Myama operation, there are four main sites which are PCML Yangon Office, Gear Computation Platform, Pipeline Operating Center and Metering Station. And this is the Yangon office of Petronas Chaligal Myama operation. Uh, actually, Petronas Chaligal Myama operation is the operator for Yangon Oil and Gas Fee, and it is a joint vendor between PCML and Ministry of Gas and Energy, Nippon and Gas Exploration Cooperation, Petroleum Authority of Thailand Exploration and Production International. This is the Yerikon platform and it is built in 1998 and mobilized to its current position in 1999. And it compresses drilling warehouse platform, rotation platform, booster compressor platform and floating storage of and offloading vessel which is FSO. And it's produced 550 million standard cubic feet of gas and 12,000 12, barrels of condensate per day. And it is located in advanced sea of Oshun, Myanmar. And this is the pipeline operating center POC. And it's comprised of filtration, pressure control, and pipeline control. <coughs> this is the metering station. It's located in Myanmar and Thailand borderline. And it's controlled by pipeline operating center control room. Now I would like to show the organization of Petronas Chaligali Myanmar and Telecom Department. The head of the Myanmar operation is the general manager and at this management there are 12 altogether department and I am doing my training in the maintenance engineering department. Telecom session is under the maintenance engineering department and under the telecom session we have a telecom specialist which is who is my supervisor and three more telecom engineers. Now I would like to share the knowledge and experience gained from my student industrial training. At the beginning of my training, uh, I have learned that there are seven layer of open system in the connection model which is widely used in the modern day. The, they are physical data link, network, transport session, presentation, application. These are the details of three main types of internet protocol addresses which is class A, B and C. <coughs> I have stated the starting IP and ending IP of each type and some more details on the on this table. Why? Uh, what other classes do you have A, B and C? 
uh, we have a uh, class D and class E. Uh, according to the CCNA books, class D is for Marky Cats purpose and class E is for testing purpose and future research. Okay. Yep. Okay. And there is a process of dividing a network into two or more network, which is called subnetting. And I learned through my training, and I managed to construct. I have just managed to construct the virtual network using the NetSim software, which is the simulation software. Under the under this construction, we have a router configuration, switch configuration, post configuration. We acknowledge the rock link technique and interface configuration. Right. So why would you create subnets? Because nowadays the world is running out of internet protocol address and this is a way of dividing the existing network. Then we can use a more uh, internet protocol address. But that's usually network address translation subnetting is why do you subnet? Network address translation is usually what we use for yeah. like your public IP address and then you net use your network address translation to private IP address. But well, once we're in private IP addresses, why would you subnet? Subnet because we can have a we can have more uh, post address in the in that network address. More host or less host if you submit? More host. More host. More networks. So for example we have a 10 network yeah. in Petronas. So we use 1071A in Yangon. Yeah. 10 at the POC. 1071.12 on a platform, 1071.14. So we're subnetting to create more and more networks from our network range. Expensive. Okay. Yeah. And I have a chance to configure the 3 com switch by using the hyper terminal and console cable, and which is required for the POC. Sites. And I also configure the virtual local area network, which is VLAN. And one of the telecom engineer uh, guided me to perform the packet capture, and I managed to do that. So what's a VLAN? VLAN is, uh, as we can see here, virtual local area network. It is a way of, um, it is a way of managing the. Uh, it is a way of part. Uh, Partition the traffic routes and isolate them from each other so that we, the, the data traffic can go for uh, multiple routes. Okay, and you can have more than one man on the same physical connection. Yeah. If you want. Yeah. So, what about packet captures? Why did you perform packet captures? Uh, the reason why we perform the packet capture is to analyze the network stated uh, by doing that we can identify where the network failure is occurred yeah okay for voice or data both okay and i have a good experience in the micro system configuration by using the web browser and i can also configure the device and I can also configure the voice mail and I have a chance to manage the class of service and class of restriction under the management of the MyTel system. So device configuration on the MyTel or on the device itself? On the MyTel. Okay, so you configured all the devices yep. using the web interface. Yep. And how about class of service and class of restriction? Class of service is uh, that's a survey is a way to manage the data traffic, give them the specific feature, and class of restriction is about the 
deny an access of the traffic group. What do you mean by group? Sorry? Traffic groups? Groups. Groups. Like why would you put cause of restriction? Uh, to, to manage the user can go for the local call or international call or okay. something like that. Yeah. And this is uh, the supply system that I managed to learn during my <coughs> Training and how the architecture, how what is the architecture of the satellite system and what are the orbits that the satellite are rotating around the apps. Okay. And this is the V side, very small butcher terminal. This is uh, this is used in our uh, our operation. It is in the Yangon office as well as EOC and MS. And the dish antenna is smaller than the 3 meter and it can be point to point and multiple point. So what do we use? We use to transmit, uh, transfer the data. Do we use point to point or point to point, point. Point to point. So what about Visa? What are the main components for Visa systems? Uh, the main component are we set antenna and we set transceiver and the modem. Okay. What uh, about in front of the dish? In front of the dish is uh, it is for focusing the the okay. incoming uh, dish is the feet on there. Yeah. And then your LNA. LNA or LNB or LNC. Okay. Okay. And this is the fiber object I managed to learn during my training and it is high quality extruded glass or plastic. It has no electrical statics, so it is more efficient than the tenant cable. And the concept of transferring the data is using the total internet reflection of the light. <coughs> and it has a two modes, multi-mode and single mode. And the single mode can be can have a long distance. Then the multi mode. So where do we use single mode? Uh, if let's say we need to we need to communicate longer distance. But but in PCML, where do we use single mode? Any the, idea? Uh, we use the uh, Yangon office. And we use single mode from Yangon office to handover the exchange. Okay. And multi mode is for the Local purpose. Local with, where? Uh, meaning uh, within the office. Okay. Between buildings. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And this is the internet firewall <coughs> that can control the incoming and outgoing network traffic. I managed to land and perform, uh, managed to perform the monitoring the traffic in the content keeper and the check watts. Monitor what traffic? Internet traffic? Yeah. Another topic is the line of sight radio and I learned that they must have a clear path between one antenna and another and in order to calculate the antenna design we have to take in the height of the antenna is located, the distance between one point to another, and the curvature of the arc into the arc. Okay. And I also I also learned the radio transmission, which is used in an aviation and marine navigation aid, which is non directional beacon. And it has a standardized frequency of 190 kilohertz and 1750 kilohertz and it can be categorized by the power output median uh, median low and high okay uh, where do we use an NTV? in uh, the 
in the Yergon platform. Okay, come back to your last slide, the bio line of sight. Where do we use line of sight? This one is used in the communication between POC and meter station. Okay, anywhere else? I think it's also in the Yergon platform. So where? To FSO. Yeah. And this is the Imaset, which is used in the Jiangong office for the emergency emergency line. And it's the British Telecommunication Company, and it can communicate with the ground station through the 11 geostationary orbit satellites, and it's using L-band. Okay, only in Yangon office? Uh, also in the POC airport. Yeah, for the emergency response. And I have a chance to visit the POC and from that visit I can learn the rule and regulation in the operating area are very serious and I learn what is the best practice when we stay in the POC. Okay. And from the HSE point of view I attended the HSE briefing before I stay in the pipeline operating center <coughs> and we have a HSE sharing session in every department meeting uh, because of that I can get uh, good HSE practices and knowledges and the BCML have a practice of raising the active care too and from that I can have awareness of health safety and environment knowledge uh, so within the surrounding, within my surrounding, and these are the some other skills that I'm getting from the my training, <coughs> which are the teamwork, good relationship with the staff, communication skill, understanding and understanding and adapting of organization and culture, time management, data management, engineering responsibility and duties, configuration management, says Problem solving skill, integrate theory with the practice, and export the real working environment. Uh, while doing while I doing my training, I have a chance to stay at the supply chain management and learn the procedure and the basic process of how the things are procurement by the supply chain manage, management from the beginning of uh, applying the requisition until the issuing the purchase order or service order. Now, as for the recommendation, it is to be nice to have a strategized and practical <coughs> training exercise, familiarization, site visit to offshore platform and to improve in frequency of visiting to sites and activity on the sites. <coughs> and proactive communication between student and UTB supervisor and if we know the supervisor who is my supervisor from beginning of initiative so that we can have a clear link and communication between the supervisor and me and we can solve uh, problems and we can share the updates. Okay, what can I conclude through my value internship is Networking is a uh, networking with personnel is essential to achieve the desired result. <coughs> In an internship helps me to enhance soft skills and interpersonal skills, and it is important to have a work-life balance. And the first priority, uh, safety is the first priority in all activities, not only at work in all area of our lives. And I have a chance to able to learn, follow direction, respectful, responsible and trustworthy and practical experience valuable to build on theoretical knowledge from UTP and internship is very good opportunity to gain experience in real working environment. Okay. Okay. Now I would like to move to the Q and A section. Okay. Uh, Go back to your slide for what you learned while through your internship. 
Okay. So give some examples. Give an example of teamwork, for example. Okay, teamwork. Okay, for example, why I'm visiting to the pipeline operating center. Uh, I go together with two other telecom engineers. We have to configure a lot of schedule within some specific times. I'm measuring the length of the cable and one engineer is crimping the uh, crimping the you know, connections connection and okay. we have a teamwork then we manage to finish within the specific time and good relationship with PCML is and I have a, I have a good relation with my surrounding staff and within my departments so I'm not scared of working at here and I don't feel I feel like very good uh, environment. Yep. Ready. Okay. So communication skills, what communication skills? Uh, this is the skill I'm gaining from like for example I have to send an email from uh, to higher management level and I have to communicate with my Collect and the renter and contractor from the outside. Just email? <coughs> not not just an email. Just I'm just giving the example. With oral communication, also check in the account. Okay. So understand and adapt to the organization's culture. Uh, so we first we have to understand what is that organization culture and we. Uh, I I try to adapt it. So what's the organization culture? Patronus organization. Give Patronus, examples. Patronus organization culture is quite more flexible, and they have a code of attire. Yeah. Code of conduct. Yeah, code of conduct. Yeah, that's the organization culture. Okay. Every time. We have, to manage, uh, we have to manage the time and data management means <coughs> we have a for example we have a t-shirt for sharing the data between one department and another department it's, it is obviously that uh, this is the management of the data okay, how about time <coughs> management? Time management. I have to manage my manage well my time uh, from the coming to the office, managing my lunch break, and managing the time that the tasks are given. Okay. Uh, system engineer's responsibilities and duties. What do you mean? By this, what's the engineer's responsibilities and duties? Uh, the best example will be say we have the link down in the Yangon office, and uh, we are the one who is responsible for the link down. So we just immediately go to the Handawari exchange and we put in the switch and we troubleshoot the switch. This is our responsibility and duty. Okay. Server configuration management and access is and let's say in the Mitel system if the new employee came in to the office we have to configure and we have to manage what is the rest of service and restriction that also mean the access. Okay. okay. Problem yeah. solving skill. If we occur the problem <coughs> we have to solve within the specific time. Uh, for example, uh, we have a problem with the teleconferencing unit. We have to solve it before the teleconference. In, teleconference in, is take place. And did you manage? Yeah, but it's a theory. We theory. Try to We have. We have a. Today uh, I have a theory of electric electronic devices that I can implement within my credit credits 
and it's so open. that was one of the key objectives so what how did you integrate theory with practice here like did you use your electrical theory anywhere here from your electrical engineering this is not electrical electronic electronic yeah. but your degree is electrical and electronic yeah okay so we we'll give electronic what an example where did you use your electrical or Electronic. Let's say that we have to install the electrical cable. Okay. We have to understand the concept of three-phase system. Okay. Yeah. So did you install any electrical cables? Yeah. Where? I have PLC yeah. or? It did require for. Okay, let me know. Uh, it's required for. Shenbu yeah. office. Okay. In the. And congrat. Okay. You change the three phase? Only in the cable. You change the cable for the three phase? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to Okay. Okay, so you followed all the stuff you learned about the theory? Yeah. Like safety only or? Not only on safety, but also in the theory. Let's say if we measure the current, we have to use the voltmeter in series. These are the theory I learned from my study and I have to implement it. Okay. Okay. So exposed to a real world working environment, we know. How about your recommendations? Can we go to the recommendations? Okay. okay. To strategize a practical training as say say or strategize what do you mean by that from a UTP point of view or from a Petronas point of view or it is uh, both I think. If we manage to have a more training at the sites, example for example, let's say equipment training, okay. safety training, that would help our for our Okay, so you want to be more, you mean you want UTP and the company to arrange more training program? I mean training program or more, more on-site training? Yeah. As opposed to office training? You would rather be on-site? Because I was, I only have a one week to visit to the sites. Okay. That's what I mean. And it's stated also in the next three. You see the to improve in frequency of side visits that that's what I mean. Okay, and same for number two. Okay, I'm going to side visit also. Okay, that is I don't uh, I don't have a chance to go to the offshore platform. If if I have I will have a more experience on why and gets industry. <coughs> Okay. You're insured to go offshore? Yeah. UTP has insurance? No. Not yet. Not yet, but I think they are planning to continue. Okay. Uh, so you want more training, on-site training rather than in the office? Is that what you mean? For all not, the not more, but less. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can go there for 14 weeks if you want. <laughs> Uh, proactive communication. Okay, it's mean like uh, we have a we we don't have a proactive communication between UDP supervisor so that I cannot share what's my problems and I he cannot help me. Why? Because we only have a like email communication, email communication that. Uh, you have email communication with your supervisors? But really only two or three times. You send to them or they send to you? I send to them. And I really know who is my supervisor, UDB <laughs> supervisor, and they inform me at the middle of the internship if I. If I know who is my supervisor, UDP supervisor from the beginning, it would help me to share updates, what is uh, facing, what are the problems that I'm facing here. 
and if I don't have a clear instruction, I can ask to the UTP supervisor to explain me. Okay, so any problems here? Mm -hmm. You mean with your UTP, like the pro process from UTP or the internship program? Be because the instruction from the uh, internship unit came in late, so that what I don't know what to prepare. Okay. Something like that. Yep. Okay. What was your next slide? Oh no no. Oh yeah. Conclusion. Conclusion. Okay. I think all okay. Yeah. Thanks for your attention and have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you.